More now on the Baltimore Bridge collapse and the potential impact on America's economic supply chain for major industries such as the auto industry as well as farm and construction equipment. Uh, joining me now, I am honored to say, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. Madam Secretary, thank you very much for coming on our program today. I know you're in Georgia. Thanks. We're going to talk about your mission there. In just a moment, I wanted to first, of course, ask you about the collapse of a major port, Baltimore. I think it's the ninth largest port in the yes. U.S. Um, it's not going to be open for months, potentially, to sheep in traffic. They don't really know yet. From your purchase, Treasury Secretary, what is the cost to, you know, the auto dealers and others waiting for light trucks and cars, as well as farm equipment that comes through that port with this extended shutdown? So first, let me say that my thoughts are very much with the victims of this tragedy, and um, I'm grateful that due to quick thinking of uh, people on the bridge that there wasn't more loss of life. Um, we are trying to evaluate now what the uh, impact may be of the bridge collapse. Uh, President Biden has indicated that we will do everything as quickly as, as we possibly can to reopen the port, which is, as you said, one of the most important in the United States. And um, we have a supply chain task force that actually will be meeting uh, this afternoon to um, review what they know um, about the likely impact. But we're monitoring this very closely and preparing to take uh, any steps that can be helpful. And the president said he wants the federal government, he made a pledge, the federal government will pay for the bridge repair and recovery. Uh, I know there's a lot of money in the Inflation Reduction Act that's already been appropriated, but beyond that, will you need appropriations? Will the taxpayers be on the hook? I'm not sure what the details are. We um, have money from the uh, bipartisan infrastructure law that could potentially be helpful. Um, my expectation would be that ultimately um, there'll be insurance payments in part to cover this, but um, we don't want to allow um, worrying about where the financing is coming to hold up reconstruction. Now, the economic outlook and voter perception are improving. Certainly, inflation has come way down. But the president is still behind Donald Trump in the polls. And more fundamentally, you have to worry about the macro economy. A CNBC survey showed that Donald Trump is 16 points ahead of the president when voters were asked who would be better for them financially. 34 percent saying it makes no difference uh, who is president. So how, how can you, as Treasury Secretary, I know you don't do politics, but how can you, although you're in Georgia today, help get the message to people that the economy is better and improve it even more, get those grocery prices down, you know, help bring down the well, prices that people are feeling at their kitchen table? So the president has indicated, and I certainly agree, that getting the cost of living down should be a number one economic priority. And he's proposed many different ways of doing this. But one important way is by lowering energy prices and diminishing their volatility. Right now, um, when Putin invasions, invades Ukraine, or there are supply disruptions in the Middle East, um, we can see oil uh, and energy costs skyrocketing, harming um, America's families. And the Inflation Reduction Act um, is a comprehensive piece of uh, legislation that's creating incentives to dramatically improve um, the use of clean energy uh, in the United States. I'm here in Georgia today to uh, visit uh, a company called Suniva, which manufactures um, solar cells. And uh, this is, of course, a key input into solar panels. We have been very heavily dependent, over-dependent on China um, for our supplies of these goods. And um, the incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act have incentivized Seneva to reopen uh, their solar cell 
plant and to manufacture uh, cells in the United States. And as I said, over time, this will help lower household energy costs. But in addition, it's making our supply chains more resilient. And very importantly, it is creating very good jobs, and jobs um, most of which don't require a college education. And in parts of the country that um, haven't seen a great deal of investment in recent decades. And, Andrea, this is happening all over the country um, in clean in things related to clean energy, in batteries, electric vehicles, um, wind. Uh, it's also happening in semiconductors as a consequence of the Chips and Science Act, a bipartisan bill that was passed two years ago, and, of course, tremendous number of jobs relating to uh, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act. So what I want Americans to see is how successful um, the president's agenda, which is not just a short-term agenda, but a medium and longer-term agenda that is designed to create good jobs uh, in parts of the country that in many ways have been left behind um, and making us more secure and bringing down costs for Americans. Well, let me pick up on that, because you're about to leave for China, your second visit since you've been Treasury Secretary. And uh, I understand you are going to be warning China about the flood. I mean, Chinese goods, goods are so heavily government subsidized. Um, their electric vehicles, their lithium batteries, uh, you know, solar panels. So you're going to be taking that on. At the same time, they have filed I, at, the w, at the World Trade Organization against us for some of the things that we've done in the very acts that you're just talking about. So are we about to get into a tra trade war with China? Well, we need to make clear what our concerns are, and I believe we have very legitimate concerns. Uh, there is no country in the world that subsidizes its preferred or priority industries as heavily as China does. And clean energy, whether it's uh, electric cars, battery, uh, solar producers, um, the producers in China have received massive subsidies, and I believe China's desire is to really gl have global domination of these industries. The firm that I'll be visiting today was a successful producer of solar uh, cells. Um, in the United States some years ago, and about seven years ago, because China flooded the market with solar panels, drove down the prices to levels at which virtually no American company could compete, this company went bankrupt. And we don't intend to let that happen again. Um, we intend to uh, have play a role to produce um, items that are critical for the clean energy economy, um, the Inflation Incentive Act, uh, Inflation Reduction Act is designed to do that. And um, we're seeing a wave of investment creating good jobs uh, across the country. Um, I intend to talk to the Chinese when I visit. Um, about overcapacity in some of these industries and make sure that they understand the undesirable impact that this is having, um, flooding the market with cheap goods uh, in, on the United States, but also on many of our closest allies. And let me finally ask you about uh, a New York Times report, but other reporting that we have done on Elon Musk and his relationship with China. Obviously, Tesla competing now against their cheaper EVs. But he is really dependent on that Chinese market, very tied in with them. He has huge defense contracts. His um, satellites are the satellites we rely on for so much of our communication. And it's, is it a national security problem for when it, and his rockets, of course? Is it a national security problem for our government to have so much reliance on this one entrepreneur? Well, look, we take national security very um, uh, seriously and want to protect our national security. Um, our desire is not to shut down uh, 
economic relations with China. We want to diversify our supply chains, but many American firms operate in China and uh, gain from the ability to sell to China's large market. Uh, China obviously sells a lot in the United States, and the competition among our firms is, by and large, um, a healthy thing. Uh, we want to stabilize that relationship, uh, not shut it down. But also, we need to make sure that the playing field is level, uh, and we are concerned about Chinese subsidies and the impact on our firms. Thank you very much. Madam Secretary, safe travels when you're on the road. We appreciate it. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.